Hello again friends, Joe here once again. End of the month, that means again some new characters to look at, so we're going to do that. Uh, first off, I didn't do a video of these, uh, of the last characters we got, Summer Mirin and Summer Pshion, mostly because I was quite ill at the time. Thankfully it wasn't the C word, but it was a, a pretty bad cold that I just wasn't really wasn't up to recording video that time, unfortunately. But, uh, but like Summer Mirin seemed fine. She seemed like a good fit for like sustain in like Fire Kengo Ken comps. And Summer Shion, I honestly don't remember what her kit was, but again, she seemed fine. Nothing too amazing. But let's see what we get this time. Oh, there's four things there. One of them. One or two of them are probably summer uh, summons, actually. But, uh, summer Clarice in water. Cool. Summer Magisa, okay. Summer Eustace with a dog oak. Nice. And... Summer Belial, okay. <laughs> Yikes. And, oh no, there's a Scamcha as well. All right, seamless edit to like nine hours later, because <laughs> I have to go to work. But uh, before we look at these these new characters, let's, uh, let's do today's ten draw for free and get nothing. Yep, checks out. Okay, let's uh, let's see this. Let's look at Horny Man first. Let's see what he's about. It's not very often we look at summons on on these videos. Uh, elemental damage to foes. Two random buffs to all allies. Okay. Cunning Charm effect. Can't be summoned. Can't be called. Cunning Charm. I think that's the same as his original version, where it just gives a bunch of debuffs after a couple of turns. Uh, main aura. Boost to fire attack. Cap fire allies max HP, basically the same as his dark version. Sub dodge tank and counter effect one hit to all allies at battle start. Supplement damage taken effect. I'm gonna see if the wiki is up to date. It is so. So FLB. Uh, this is uh, up to 130 percent, and adds cap. Damage taken at 5,000 per hit. And... This doesn't change, but the supplemental damage taken goes down to 500. It starts at 2,000 at zero stars. Uh, honestly, this doesn't... This just seems like home screen. Or skin bait, really. I honestly don't... This, I don't understand. I don't actually see a situation where you'd really want to use him. The dodge encounter on the sub aura, I guess that's. I guess that's actually pretty decent for if you're needing to squeeze out damage in OTK, and that would. It's a sub aura, so it would work in any element. But apart from that, like. He seems kind of whatever. Like, he's, he's not busted. Like, he's not anywhere close to his original version. He just... Just seems like you want him for the horny art, if you're into that. So, yeah, that's kind of whatever, to be honest. Um, Yeah, let's look at these weapons first. They have been making the summer weapons pretty decent as of late. So, Clarice is... Uh, medium stamina, small sentence. That's not too bad. No FLB though, so probably won't see much use. Magisa's is a uh, big enmity and skill cap. Again, no FLB. Use this uh, big garrison, small enmity. That would probably be pretty decent if it had an FLB. Like none of these have FLBs, so I don't. I'm not sure. Not so sure they're going to see much use. But let's look at. Clarice. Use water. Her OE is massive water damage to a foe, hit to water defense and fire attack. 
and Deluge Crest to Clarice. So she's a Crest character, okay. Sharp boost to caster's attack, one hit. Strength effect, Deluge Crest. When five Deluge Crests are granted, skill changes to Radiolithic Power. Which, uh, I'm going to use the wiki just to clarify things here. Yeah, so... So if you don't have five crests, it's a 50% assassin plus strength and a, a crest. When you do have five crests, it's the same, except you also get 15% damage amplified. And that consumes the crests. That doesn't seem like 50% like, like damage amplified is nice for sure, but I don't... I'm not sure, so sure that's worth consuming all the crests. Maybe it's not a huge deal if you're using a setup, if you're also using like um, Summer Cagliostro and like Summer Kalulu as well and stuff like where you can generate crests pretty fast. I'm not sure that alone warrants consuming all those crests. Anyway, skill 2, boost the caster and water MC's triple attack rate one time and bonus water damage effects, which according to the wiki is 80%. It's pretty good. But it's only one time. 100% triple attack rate, but not guaranteed, so it does get affected by debuffs. That's fine. On a six turn cooldown. That's... I mean, it's it's not bad, but it's not great, to be honest. It would be nice if it was uh, if that was like two or three turns. That would be much better. Uh, skill 3. Plane damage to all foes. Elemental condensation effect. Increase muck max charge diamonds. What is that? Original element has the... Okay, so... Okay, so she's... So she's grand... She's Grandalphon. <laughs> That's just exactly the same as... Grand Sandalphon's fun, where he just... Oops, you're you're red now. So that's pretty good. Although you uh, water obviously doesn't have lobelia, so you can't have this up permanently, which is a shame. But otherwise, could be pretty good. The plane damage is eight 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 eight. Okay. And their supports. When Clarice is a main ally at battle start, boost to water MC's attack, max HP and damage damage capped. Effects aren't removed even when knocked out. Nice, okay. Can I see what these actual numbers are? Uh 10% perpetuity attack, 10% max HP, and 5% damage cap. Okay. Not huge, but you know, it's not nothing. It's pretty good. When a water ally casts a buff removing skill, plane damage to a foe, which is again 8888888. Delay effect and the Luge Crest, that's similar to Grand Cagliostro, <laughs> which makes sense since it is Clarice. Um, she... She didn't seem bad, like, this is obviously the big thing. This is nice as well. The rest of these aren't amazing. But are not bad either, like... I think it will... Whether or not she's going to be really good or just plain normal good would be dependent on how, like, how much of a requirement this ends up being in, like, like setups like harder raids and stuff. So, which is, so that remains to be seen. Like, you know, that's the sort of thing that people smarter than me will take time to figure out. I mean, in that first glance, having Grand Sandal, the Grand Sandal Fonz S1, basically, like that seems pretty huge. That seems something that you definitely want for some stuff. But like I said, like um, you don't have Lobelia to have it up all the time. But you know, maybe, you know, maybe this. I don't know how how good water can race like PBHL. Maybe this makes that better, I don't know. I'm not super up on the setups for that. I just stick to my my light viking setup for the for that, so I'm not sure how the other elements fare. Cause I know Grand Sandalphon 
meant that Earth could race it pretty well. So I would assume that this would as well. Like it's, it lasts for five turns, which in a racing setup is all you need really. So maybe, maybe she will be a good slot in for that sort of stuff. But that remains to be seen. She seems pretty good. First impression seems pretty good. Uh, we'll see how it shakes up in the long run. But uh, let's move on to to uh, Magiza, who is dark now. Massive dark damage to a foe on Ogi, end cooldown for tide mark, bonus damage, bonus dark damage based on the number of oblivion crests, max five hits, cool. Presumably that will be skill damage, which is nice for all you agonize gamers out there, which is me. Uh, tide mark, so that's the one that gets reset on Ogi. Five hit dark damage to a foe, remove one buff, Oblivion Crest to caster. Hit number increases based on number of Oblivion Crests upon cast max 10. Nice. That's a lot of skill damage. Skill 2, dark damage to foe, Oblivion Crest to all allies, random buff. Okay. Dark damage to foe, instant CA standby to caster and school in for other skills. So this is very similar to... Um, uh, Valentine's Aglavail. Gain these effects in order based on number of Oblivion Crests, boost to attack, boost to defense, deal multi-attacks, bonus dark damage effect, fight alongside Roma Morax. I'm guessing that's similar to her, her Earth version, maybe her Fire version as well. I'm not super familiar with that one where you basically just get a big skill nuke at the end of her turn, which is cool. Especially if this is, like, permanent. Like, uh... Five of me, oh, I consume one of her. Okay, so I was going to say if she had any way to consume those crests, which she does. Your whole team can, which to basically get a, a veil, which is, that's pretty nice. That would, be, that would basically mean that this is permanent, basically. Assuming you're not getting hit by a lot of debuffs and having to consume crests to, to deal with that. You can have probably most of this up. And have it up most of the time once it's built up, so that's pretty cool. She seems nice. Um, but like I said, very similar to Valentine's Aquaville. A little bit different where she, I'm presuming that just straight up puts this off cooldown when you when she ogies. Whereas uh, Aquaville, it res it it didn't reset anything. It just kind of lowered the cooldown by what was it one or two turns. For all of his skills when he when he ogied, so that means you're not going to be getting these buffs up quite as often as you would as you would with Valentine's Aquaville. So you're basically you're gonna you're gonna get this you're gonna get a buff from this at the start because you're not gonna have too many crests. You're gonna reset it again and get like one or two buffs again, and then but then you're not gonna be able to get more until it uh, it resets naturally. Which I'm going to assume that goes down to seven? Seven turns, yeah. So, pretty good. Probably not quite as on, on par as, as Agovel. But she also benefits from the fact that she's in dark, which can really take advantage of skill damage at the moment, because, like I said, Agonize. So, that would be nice, because this, this gets up to ten hits, and you can fire this off pretty quickly because of it resetting on Ogi. And that also uh, is a dispel as well, which is always nice. So, so yes, seems pretty good. Really good art as well. <laughs> but yeah, she, I'd, like to, I'd, uh, I'd like to mess around with her. In, in the game, in a skill damage setup is what I meant. <laughs> uh, finally, last but not least, let's look at Summer Eustace with the good doggo who's in wind. Return attack, massive wind damage to full hit to attack, stackable hit to earth attack. Okay. Splintered cell effect to cast on an ally, can't, can't splintered cell, CA specs boosted, charge bars boosted in every turn, deals bonus wind damage. I was going to say, this is similar to his... his... Uh, his dark version, but the actual effects seem to be completely different. If I mind right, his dark version was mostly a multi-attack buff. Whereas this is more, hey, do 
do fatter ogies and do it more often and also get some echoes when you're not ogieing so that's that's pretty cool skill 2 to caster and an ally with splintered cell effect 100% boosted charge bar is nice additional effect when a foe's thunderstruck level is 10 or above senior reactivation um i'm trying to think does if we else can do thunderstruck in wind does summer albert do that i don't remember if only I had a website that I could check to find that out. Albert Summer. No, he does not. That's a Thunder Swift, which is a buff on himself. So, yeah, I'm not sure about this Thunderstruck thing. Especially since, uh, I don't know how you actually apply it at this point. Um, so, skill 3, damage mitigation effect to all allies. Shield effect to caster with uh, skill 1, so that's similar to the the Paladin buff thing, where it just caps your your damage taken. There was another character recently as well that has this, which I completely forget. It might have been... Is it either Mirin or Shion? The ones that I missed last time? It might have been one of them. Someone got this recently as well. Anyway, while Splinter Cell is an effect, boost to Eustace and dies. Deal bonus when and raise Thunderstruck level by one upon using a charge attack. So that's for himself and whoever has this. So this might take a little while to get up, depending on your setup. Um, boost to wind eyes of CA specs against foes with Thunderstruck effect. I'm going to have a quick check on the wiki to see if any of that is contingent on the level of it. Yeah, 30%. CA damage and 10% cap for Thunderstruck. I'm just going to click on this straight Thunderstruck and see if the wiki tells me how to do it. Uh, no other ways in Wind to, to do Thunderstruck other than this at the moment, so... Uh, maybe that's something that Wind will get more of in the future and it will be... This will make him a much... A much better card. Like, he seems fine at the moment. Like, nothing amazing. But, like, you know, if you're... Like this, like this is mostly Ogi stuff, so like, I don't know, this seems pretty good if you're playing like Kengo or something in Wind. Put this on MC and just, you know, you'd already generate a ass ton of meter as it is with Kengo and then you're just going to get even more with this. Plus, you know, Ogi specs and stuff. Um, he seems fine, like, definitely not bad, but not like amazing. Like again, if... If Wind gets more support for this Thunderstruck thing, then, you know, he'd be a, a lot better because it would mean you could get this, this CA reactivation up a lot quicker and more often. So yeah, he seems cool. Like, not, not amazing. Like, quite a lot of the summer characters this year haven't been, like, amazing super top tier, but we still have, I think, one or two more batches to go. You have, obviously, August uh, Flash. And then they usually put release some on a 3% banner for some reason. I'm not sure why they do that. But they do, so... So yeah. Uh, not too bad. I would be happy with most of these, particularly these two. I would. I hope to luck sack these with uh, the free draws. But I'm also going to buy that Scamcha as well. So let's do that, because they're... Well, it's mostly recent, uh, recent characters on this Scamcha. Pikala don't have. Uh, Shalem I do have. Shion I don't have. Silva I don't have. Elnot I do have. Tabina I don't have. Medusa I do have. And then Mirin, Namaya, and Vajra I don't have. So that's a seventy percent chance of getting a new recent summer character. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna buy that. Now I will obviously edit out all of this PayPal shit. Okay. Here's hoping we get something in the, the normal 10 draw. And also 30% chance of a gold moon. I hope that doesn't happen. I really hope that doesn't happen. Alright, let's go. Hey, let's go! Ooh, two! But that's either gold moons or summons. But we'll see what happens. That's a summer memo mail, okay. God damn it. 
And then, fucking, that's what, Vikawa? I just sparked her <laughs> a couple of months ago. That's... Oh dear. That doesn't bode well for getting something good here. Oh, come on. Give me something good. Yeah, it's something new. Oh, silver! That is silver? Yeah, that's silver. Cool. Uh, I don't have... I don't have Wellness, which is unfortunate. She goes really well with her, but... Kata Silver is pretty good, so I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. But... That's that. Thanks for watching. And until next time. Couple of weeks. August Flash. Or, you know, maybe even sooner. Depend I don't remember when they do those, those new 3% banner summer character releases. I don't remember if it's before or after Flash, so it might be... We might be seeing each other a bit sooner than normal, but uh, until then, thanks for watching, peace out, cheery bye, good luck on your, your free daily tendrils, thanks for watching.